Hey everybody, it's your girl Coco Kitten Bruja here and I am back with another deck review. So, this particular deck is near and dear to my heart because after... When I, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. When I decided to get back into tarot, like seriously, really getting back into tarot, this was the very first deck that I purchased. And it was because it was cute, because you guys know how I am, aesthetic. So I picked up from Amazon the Kawaii Tarot. And it says a 78 card deck of magic and cute. And it's by Diana Lopez. Um, I immediately connected with this uber cute little super basic deck um and I feel like it is it's pretty good for a beginner like myself um it's definitely kid friendly I do just plan on passing this deck down to my daughter when she is of age um to get her introduced into tarot and then from there the more serious decks right um I think this deck is absolutely adorable and I connected to it fairly well. Um, I have used this deck on other people when I was starting out, you know, really seeing if reading other people was going to be my thing. Um, but let's get into it. It is a box, a book box, shall I say, which I want to say this is the only deck I have that is a book box and I say that because it's a hinge but it doesn't have a flap so you just open it up and then from there you can slide the guidebook out from this little sleeve right here the only thing I don't like about this box well is a couple of things because this can slide out fairly easily if the box is moved around too much but the cards are split up here and that's just that just gets to be a bit much for me but at the time, I didn't care. It was my first deck. Um, that doesn't take away from the cards. But let's look at the guidebook. Super cute little book. It is in color. Um, and you totally get a fairly decent um, interpretation when it comes to the cards. So the font is a little on the small side though there are certain places where the font could be a little bit bigger so we have the intro we have our spreads the major the minor typical typical guidebook typical table of contents so like i said the font is small there is a lot going on here but the font is small as hell like I don't have my glasses on, so I'm not even about to try to read this. But if you had, if I had my glasses on, I'd be fine. But the font is pretty small. Um, there's pretty much a quick reference for the major arcana here. It tells you how to read reverse cards, um, what the suits mean, what the numbers mean. I, I feel like for beginners, this is these few pages right here are very good um, because the imagery is so basic. I feel like having these cards, I mean, having this little quick reference here is awesome for beginners. I actually use this quite a bit. And then, of course, we get into our spreads, the typical Celtic cross. Um, oof, 21 cards. You want to talk about getting snatched. Oof. But then we go into... The meanings so you have a outline of what the card shows on uh what the imagery shows on the card you have your upright and you have your reversed very 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 basic simple plain black and white what it is what it is when it in when it's reversed there's not a lot of extra jazz you have your um keywords when it's upright keywords when it's reversed and that's really it Again, there's not a lot of bells and whistles, which I feel like is good for a basic deck, especially for beginners, because you don't want to feel too overwhelmed with what crystal goes with it, what sign, what zodiac, what, what number, what plant, all of that stuff, right? So it's very, very user-friendly. It's very good for beginners. I love this deck for beginners. Um, but it's the same thing across the board. Even once you get to the minor arcana, it's going to be the same thing, same structure. What it is upright with keywords, what it is in reversed in keywords, right? So it's not a lot of um, extra 
bells and whistles or anything like that. And then of course the final thought, not a lot of bells and whistles, which is why I feel like it's great for your beginners. Now let's go into the imagery, which like I said, this, this is a bit much for me, but it is what it is. I will never take anything away from this particular deck just because this was this was my day one. This was, you know, what set me on the course of who I am today because this deck helped me understand tarot in a very basic way. Okay, so we have the Fool. So again, very cute, very, very, very basic. You are not going to pull much intuitively from this deck. However, using this to get the fundamentals of tarot, it works. It absolutely works. This is a very cute, fun deck. If you want to do readings for children with this deck, if you want to use this um, to... Um, go deeper into like a love reading. It's very, very cute. Are you going to do an ancestral reading with this? Probably not, you know, probably not. But if you're doing like, for those of you who are spiritualists and you do readings for other people, if you were doing like a cutesy Valentine's Day two card pull or something like that, this is a very cute deck. And again, for kids, if you're going to read kids, if you're going to introduce your kids to tarot, this is a very, very good deck for that. See, it's not very harsh when we talk about the death card. It's very cute and simple. The tower, like, is adorable. Star, duh. Moon, duh. Sun, duh. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's very, very, very basic. But it's cute. I like it it was it was this is my baby this is my first deck right so then we go into the pentacles very very straightforward not a lot of bells and whistles right then we go into our swords we have our cups and with the cups you're gonna get all different kind of cups you got chalices you got mugs you got all kind of stuff right then we have our wands and again with the wands it's going to be different lollipops candy canes suckers all different kind of wands so again super duper cute not a lot of bells and whistles but for kids for love for all this all things cute like it says on the box this is a great tarot deck um Aside from the font being a little small, the, the guidebook is very straight to the point. It has great little keynotes and little, you know, ways to help you understand tarot. I, I recommend this deck. Um, it shuffles really well. Now you can, you can bend these cards. These, these cards have been loved. So you're going to see a little bit of a bend in them. Um, but they shuffle really well. They are a tiny deck, so for those of you with smaller hands, this deck is going to feel really good in your hands. They shuffle great. Spirit, I'm not pulling cards. I'm not pulling cards. I'm not pulling cards with this deck. Well, whatever. We got the Page of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles. I'm going to let y'all... I think the Page of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles came up in another deck review. I'm pretty sure the Page of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles popped up in another deck review. Um, Go back and look at Shadowscape's uh, uh, deck review. I want to say that um, for some reason, the Page of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles wants to come up. So y'all take that as you will. I was just trying to show them how to shuffle spirit. I'm not, I'm not trying to do no reading right now. But anyway, that's, 
that's the deck. <laughs> you guys let me know how you feel in the comments um how cute this deck is if you would use it with your children if you wouldn't um if you're new here hit the subscribe if you're not hit that share i love and appreciate you guys so much if you like to book a reading you can go over to cocokittenbrewhot.com if you like the crystal resin items you see you can go over to prism by ckb.com i love you guys and i'm sending tons of love and light your way and until next time peace <laughs>